Hey everybody, Dave here. I have not made a video in a long time, have I? Well, you know, that's what happens. I have been trying to learn a lot of stuff. C Sharp, VB.net, PowerShell, a number of different other technologies just to kind of help myself get better at development in general. Because of that and some college classes that I'm taking, I haven't had nearly as much time to make videos and stuff. So um, I'm gonna try to do that a little bit more. And one of the changes that I've made is that you'll notice there's really no flashy stuff in the videos. Like there's no crazy like bumper video at the beginning with stuff like flying around and exploding or whatever. That's not going to happen anymore because I, I really want to just focus on providing information. It's kind of time consuming for me to do some of those things. So if for some reason <laughs> it was a big deal to you to see that, that stuff happen in the video or you wanted to see the you know production quality improve or something... That's probably not going to happen. So let's talk about a Blue Prism developer tip. I want to show you something in calculation stages that can really help you to deal with your data items, especially this is going to be useful for you when your data items grow to a large number across the process or on individual pages. You'll see what I've done here is just show you an example of using blocks with different colors to organize your data items. This, these are not organized in any kind of meaningful fashion and, and I haven't named the data item blocks or anything. Sometimes when you, you have a lot of data items like this, you have some data items on other pages and maybe you have 30 more pages. I don't know that that's necessarily a great design for our process, but maybe it'll happen, right? So you want to be able to deal with managing all of those data items. You can almost get lost trying to find them and you end up using the find text feature to find your data items and stuff. Let's say you come to a situation and you're like, ah, pff, where, where's that data? I mean, I know, I know, I know that the data item starts with the word, uh, it's like zip or something, right? So like, is it, is it zip code? Does it, is it zip code one word or is it, I can't remember. Um, so you could go up and you could do find text. I mean, that's fine. Uh, but another way that you could do it, instead of looking through all of these data items, of course, you probably saw it by now, it's right here, but you could take a calculation stage. You could also use a decision stage for this, a multi-calc stage. Any of those will work for this purpose. Open the calculation stage, and then you'll see over on the right, probably kind of like this, you'll probably have data type checked. And so you'll see the different types of data, and you'll see a plus sign next to any of them that have data items in them. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to click down on some of these and you'll see that there's a number of data items in each of the groups. This is probably the first and easiest way to kind of see your data items split up. So this is as opposed to trying to trying to find your data items in all of this because there's no way to identify the data types. So in this view though, if I know zip code, for example, I, I'm trying to look for that. I know that it's probably text or number. If I made it, I'd probably know which data type it is, but let's say that I'm not really sure. It could be either. Um, so what I can do is come into this view and I can go, well, let's see if it's a number. Uh, nope, no zip. And I can go to text and zip. There it is. Now, what I can immediately see from this is that zip codes right? Zip codes dot something. That means it's a collection. So I would immediately jump up and look inside my collections and boom, there's zip codes. Um, maybe that's not a great example. So if I were looking for an actual just data item and not a collection, maybe I'm looking for the word account for account type, and I'm not sure where it is on the page. I can come in here and I can uh, say, okay, well, so it's account type. It's probably a text. There's my account type. All right. So that's one way you could do it based upon the data type. Uh, the other way you can do it is to deselect the data type and what will happen is all of your data items get organized alphabetically. So A to, hey, I actually have a Z, A to Z. I've found that it, it, it it's really painful for me to do context switching. And that means I'm working on one thing and then I need to switch and work on something else. Anytime the screen changes on me, I get a little confused. Maybe that's just me. It feels a little bit easier for me to go inside of here right click on an item, hit properties and work on this and then deal with the data items in this view. A lot of times you'll want to make changes to your data items. You, you realize like a naming convention that you need to adjust your data items for. This is probably a lot easier way to do that. I can find my data items by, you know, I, like when I was looking for zip codes, I, I see Z is down here. That's the fastest way that I can find my data item. It doesn't matter where it is on the page. doesn't matter what its data type is. I can find it in this list. What I can also do is edit it. So if I, uh, you know, had a naming convention I need to change, I actually want this to be 
um, one word. Maybe all of my data items need to be one word. It's a lot easier to go rename, change the, move, remove the space, rename, remove the space, rename, remove the space, right? This, as opposed to going to these and opening this, remove the space, click OK, find another one, uh, right? So it's a lot easier for me to go through this list and it's a lot more comfortable. You can add data items here too. Now this isn't gonna position it on the page where you want it, so maybe this isn't how you wanna create data items, but you do have the option. You can right click on one, insert new, and then now I've got a data item that's just named data one. I can change the name to balance, which I think I already have an account balance up here, but we'll pretend like that doesn't exist already. And then now I can go into properties and I can change it to a number. Maybe I'll put initial value in there for us. And um, you know, maybe I want it to not be hidden from other pages. Click okay, right? And so now here it is. So now that I actually just unchecked that box, the one that here that uh, unhides this data item from other pages, I wanna show you that this can actually help you, especially when you are organizing data items or, or working with them, editing them across multiple pages. So what I can do is click on page right here, and now this will show me my data items grouped by page. So before it would just put them all together. And what I'll see is reference number is on another page. I actually named the other page another page. I'm pretty creative like that. The page I'm working on is what I named the page I'm working on. Super creative when I did that one. I'm gonna click view all items and you'll see a couple of extra data items pop up. Okay, so one more popped up and it's kind of grayed out. Limitation indicator, you probably can't read it on the screen there. Um, what this means is that this data item is being shown because I've got view all items selected so I can actually edit this and you'll see that it says hide from other pages in the process, so this is checked. Since it's on another page, it's grayed out, meaning I can't actually work with it on this page. So if I were to try to do this and reference it inside of a calculation stage, it won't let me. If I were to try to do evaluate expression, it says this data item cannot be accessed from the stage, it's been hidden from the current page but this is still a way that you can manipulate that uh, data item. Also, if you decided you wanted to use that data item, you don't even have to worry about what page it's on. You don't have to go to that page and do that whole context switching thing that I was talking about. You wanna use it here. You don't care what people have told you about global data items being bad. We're just gonna use it anyway, I'm kidding. Global data items are okay, just eh, you know, avoid them. What you can do is right click on this, properties, uncheck the box, and boom, we no longer get an error because we unhit it, right? I'm gonna go, go back and do properties, select the box again. Now it's back to gray. I'm trying to show you all the things you can do with this pane over here. It's a lot more powerful than it might seem at first. So another thing to note here is that whenever you create new items, it's, I find this kind of neat. I can right click on a specific data type group here. You have to have data type selected at the top but then you can right click on it and you can go add new as child. And this automatically creates a data item. It uses just a, a basic name of data one, data two, data three, uh, but it creates it under the right data type. You know, maybe this is just me, but when I go and create it from inside of this view, I drag it on the page, it's automatically an unknown data type. That just irks me. I know it irks you too. And you can totally avoid that irksome problem by just going inside of a calculation stage right click on the group you want, you know, maybe images, add new as child, and boom, now you've got a data item. You skip the unknown data type problem altogether and, and we all can feel better for it. There's more. Not only can I go and, you know, as I showed you before, I changed this reference number data item to be, or excuse me, it was another one. Let me click view all items. Let's look at the other page and we can see the data types, okay. So it was limitation indicator. I don't know what that means, by the way. That's just a, a made up. Hey, I was actually being creative that time. I can't work with this on this page, right? If I wanted to create data items that are global or even not global, I can still do that from the same calculation stage. Maybe you create that from this page and I can go and, and manipulate this and you know, it's date. I can I can put a an initial value. I can rename this sample, let's spell it right, sample date. 
uh, click OK, and boom, now on this other page, I have another data item. Let's go over and look at it. All right, so it threw it in a random place. <laughs> okay, we might have to come over here and, and move our data items into a, a, a better organization. You can stub out processes, you know, stub out all your data items pretty quickly by doing this. And in my opinion, that, that biggest benefit, as I mentioned before, was the lack of context switching. You don't have to do that quite as much and distract yourself by moving around to different windows and staying inside of that calculation stage view. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that you will try to implement using this. Let me know in the comments if you found that this is helpful for you. If you didn't know about it, I will keep making videos like this if people are interested about things that are a little lesser known about Blue Prism. Because as we all know, uh, Blue Prism comes out with a lot of functionality, right? Over the past few years, they've come out a number of different pieces of functionality that they just like to hide from us. I don't know why that is. I think it's because when, you know, when you, like when you find a $5 bill in your pocket or maybe a $20 bill, I should probably make that more universal, right? Like other currencies and stuff. If you find 20 bucks in your pocket, $20, and you pull it out and you go, oh my goodness, it's $20. I think that's what Blue Prism is doing to us. They put these cool features, bury it in there, and then when we discover it one day, we're so shocked and elated to be finding such a great feature instead of all of it just being available right there. Is that what it is? Let me know what you think.